Hi, I'm Belinda Glenn, and I'm here with Jason Rogers. Um, we know each other through Convy Productions, mm -hmm. um, and um, I've done work for them in the past. I've been doing some work for them recently, and you have been doing line producing. Mm -hmm. um, Convy is a film production company, and uh, we do commercials, and then recently we've been working on our first feature film, which is that's cool. Right. Yeah. Um, and um, so that's primarily what you do in your life right now. Mm -hmm. That's right. Line, for those who don't know, line producing is basically someone who manages the details behind a production. So uh, if it has to do with anything on managing things on the set or offset, um, paperwork, things like that, it's, that's what a line producer does. Just like a little bit of everything. Kind of so. a jack of all trades position. Jack of all trades. I know right. you do a lot of technical stuff. I know mm -hmm. you do a lot of hands-on stuff. Didn't even know that you did paperwork stuff, actually. I do, yeah. I, so. I basically dabble in every every part of a production. So all the okay. way from the beginning of helping people write the script to um, helping on set. On set, I tend to be a grip. Um, or I take care of building things for the set as well. Um, and then offset, I also do a lot of editing color correction um, and managing databases. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. A lot of us at Convy do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, but what I'm excited to talk about is uh, something I discovered, la I don't know, last year sometime when we were chatting, is that you've written a book mm -hmm. and I'll just hold it up for you guys. It's Social, The Power of Relationships, which I believe this was, a, is it personality types? No, it's a, it's all okay. about social skills. Like oh, okay. Helping people develop their social skills. Okay, I was thinking, mm -hmm. do you have one that's about personality types? Nope. No, okay. Uh, well, there is a section in there called the five social roles that we okay. play when we're in any, in any type of group setting. Okay. So, and, and that's something that I discovered on my own through trial and error. So when oh, I was, when okay. I was a teenager, or a child, I was a really awkward social okay. kid. You okay. know? I was homeschooled and uh, <laughs> we moved around a lot. So it was, I just was in my upbringing the most awkward or one of the most type of awkward people you could be. Oh my gosh, I had no so. idea. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about this. I'm, I love discovering these things yeah, while we and, talk. And I became determined to figure out what it was that made me so weird and why is it that it was so much of a challenge to be friends with people you know? that, I relate to that a lot like I occasionally I would go to school so I, I've experienced different types of schools uh, mm -hmm. and in high school I would see these kids who looked like they were the popular kids they had all these friends and they were always laughing and having a good time and I was like man why is it that I can't be that person you know how can I be that person the one who everyone has their eyes on and is mm -hmm. everyone wants to be friends with that person type of thing. Yep, I was that kid too. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> through Just wondering what's the magic ingredient or what are they, how did they, there's got to be a way. There is, you know? there is a way. But it's also understanding your own strengths and really what you're comfortable with because the there's multiple, multiple different ways of being in a room or have, presenting your presence, you know, you could say. So you're not saying so much everybody is a different personality type. You're saying we all go into different modes or certain mm -hmm. of us have prefer preferred modes? Yes, yes. So or... so we all play different roles um, in any type of social situation, right? Um, the first, and there's five ones that I've identified that make a huge difference. So. Okay. The first one is the organizer. That's the person who has organized the event and got everyone there, right? Mm -hmm. The second one is the, um, the speaker, the person who loves to speak, um, who enjoys being the center of attention, who always has something to say or an opinion to give out, right? Okay. Would a performer fit in that category? Is that Possibly, different? Possibly, but it's a little okay. different because okay. performers... It depends on the type of performer because if you're on stage, you're there's a completely different persona versus being 
uh, in a social group. You okay. know. Oh, right. I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. These are analogies to being in a social group. Yep. Yeah. That's right. So you have your organizer, your speaker, and then you have your wingman. So okay. speakers have a certain energy that doesn't... So it burns out quickly if you don't have someone else to bounce the energy off of. So, for example, okay. right now, in, in our little group of two, I'm the speaker and you'd be the wingman, where you're helping me kind of like maintain this, this energy and this excitement of whatever we're discussing, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what the wingman does, is they, they're the person in the circle that is the most connected to the person who's talking. And mm -hmm. they have this um, synergy going on where they're bouncing off of each other. And sometimes they can get really excited and they're like um, just being crazy, you know? And they're just bouncing back and forth. Sometimes it's just super casual and chill. It's just like the other person who is the most um, connected to the person who's speaking. So I guess my question real quick is, mm -hmm. are you saying there's two people and they both switch back and forth from speaker role to wingman role? Mm -hmm. Or are you saying like in the course of an entire evening, one person will tend to be the wingman the whole night and the other person will tend to be the speaker the whole night? Or are you saying that someone tends to always be the speaker and someone always tends to be the wingman? Someone else always tends to be the wingman. It depends on your personality because okay. you can you can switch in and out of any of these roles um, within the same night. Okay. Like it, you don't. You're not really stuck in them ever. Okay. Um, and then you have your and after you have your speakers, wingman, you then have your wallflowers, right? The people who are grateful to be there, but they don't necessarily speak up, you know? They just listen. And yep. they love to just listen yeah. and be grateful to be in the room. If they want to say something, they'll whisper it softly next to the, to the person next to them. And that's about okay. as far as they want to speak. You know, that's yeah. as far as they want to um, get out there. And some of us go through days where we are wall, wallflowers, mm -hmm. and some people probably spend more time in wallflower energy where they're more frequently the wallflower in the room. Mm -hmm. But maybe, I don't know, I'm throwing this in, in there, but maybe when they're with their family, they become more outgoing. Oh, yeah. Or something, people they're comfortable around. I don't know. Oh, you got it. You okay. Got it. it all depends okay. on, on the type of people you're around and how they make you feel and how confident and, and what you want to do around that type of person, you know? Okay. So these these roles, they, they come and they go. It all depends on how confident and what you want to do. Um, so, and then the last one is the, um, the lone wolf. So there's two different types of lone wolves. You have your confident lone wolf and then your not confident lone wolf. Okay. And your confident lone wolf is if they're at a party, which rarely they ever are, because a party is not where they want to be. Ah. But if they are there, they're there for someone else. So they don't really care what people think about them. They don't want to talk. They don't really want to socialize. The only reason why they're there is because they're supporting someone else who was, who wanted them there, you know, type of thing. Okay. Yep. So, I know those types. Uh -huh. <laughs> then you have your... your um, non-confident lone wolf who wants to be there, who wants to socialize, but they're so caught up in their mind and their, um, their trains of thought that they um, don't know how to act. They don't know how to be in, this, in, in the situation. They're standing kind of in the corners or, or alone and they're listening into the conversations happening in all the circles, but they're not brave enough to just step into the circle. And it's, um, they, and when they do, they want to speak up, but anytime they try, they feel like they're constantly being interrupted. Or they're, saying the wrong thing. Or they're saying the wrong thing. That they didn't want to say. Yep, or, or they've, um, they're behind in the conversation, so when they finally speak up and they have what they want to say, the conversation's long gone, like what they have to say doesn't apply anymore. That's more me mm -hmm. these days. Like that's why improv comedy is so hard for me and I've been going to classes is because I don't live in my head in the moment as much. Like I wanna be in control or something. Like, mm -hmm. cause I've just noticed like Im improv, it, the more you do it, the better you get at it. But I'll, I'll be in a moment I'm like, oh, what? 
what should I say right now? What sh how should I react to this person who's, who's playing this character and now I'm playing a character? Like, I just don't as much viscerally just react. There's no one way I react to things. Mm -hmm. but, but then, then you know, a few minutes later, I'll be like, oh, I should have said this. You know, it's like, or even just a few seconds later and it'll be too late. Yeah, it'll yeah. be too late. So what happens there is you're just caught in the mind traps. You know, you have these train of thoughts that you're going on. You're not present. You're not mm -hmm. in the moment. And so uh, and that's normally where I start anytime I walk into a room of people. Is I tend to be a little shy and awkward, and I don't and I don't know how to get out of my own head. And the trick to do that. So now still we'll go, today. Still today. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sometimes I have I I struggle with that. But it, the trick that I found to pull me out of that mm -hmm. is to just be grateful, you know, and, and accept myself for who I am. Like, okay. it's like, whatever I'm wearing in the moment, that's what I'm wearing, you know. However I am, that's who I am, you know. And so, and being grateful for that and then looking for an opportunity to help someone else, you know. Okay. It's like, uh, and not in a big way. In a small way, and it depends on how big the group is too. You know, if it's a huge like party get together type of thing, then um, I look for someone else who has the same energy that I have. So if I'm shy and awkward and scared to talk to someone, I'm going to look for someone else who is also a little shy and awkward, and I'll go talk to them mm -hmm. because first of all, they're going to be the one who's going to be the most grateful for me to come up and just talk to them. Second, it's also the easiest person to talk to in the room because there's almost nothing I can do wrong. They're yeah. just <laughs> grateful I'm there talking to them. Right. Right. Yep. I know so. this strategy too, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I go up, talk to them, um, find out who they are, like start strike up a conversation. Now there's, there's all sorts of different ways of having a conversation, but we won't go into that. Um, but having that conversation and validating and listening to what their interests are um, builds my confidence, you know. Mm -hmm. And as soon as my confidence is up, then I can then start working the room. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So uh, this is where I can then step into those circles. Now, that's the first trick to this is understanding that um, you can step into any circle of people in the room. Like... They're not going to wonder what you're doing there. They're not going to like push you out of the circle. I mean, this nine out of ten, you're in a social setting to meet new people. Yeah. So it's not like people don't want to meet new people. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but really quick. Go for it. And I want to hear the rest of your thought, yeah. but um, I feel like because I kind of came to the same kind of thing when I had a friend who who has a he has a whole personality system um, had helped me realize I am an introvert which is kind of pain kind of painfully true about me yeah. <laughs> but I was same I had worked so hard against this for so long I convinced myself I was an extrovert and it's not that I can't be extroverted I don't need to go into that whole topic but what I kind of decided from that is like when I go into a room and it, it's this still tends to be true like if I'm not comfortable I always have this sense if I just walk I'm first into a room and I just walk up to somebody and try to start talking to them it doesn't tend to work for me mm -hmm. I think it does work for some people to do that but it doesn't seem to work for me like dependably <laughs> or even at all <laughs> much Interesting. and I, I kind of yeah. Have learned the same thing as you is either talk to someone who is approachable or another thing I realized is like oh I'm an introvert so it might work for me to not talk to anyone and let extroverts approach me you can do that too. because extroverts can maybe get away with just walking up to somebody because there's something about my energy that oftentimes it doesn't work for me to just go up to someone and be like hi and, you know it, it automatically can devalue me sometimes but it does work for some people it, very well it depends on the mindset but okay. yes, um, and it's it's also the type of person you choose to approach because it's okay. it's really important to know where your energy level is, okay. and to approach someone else who's at that same energy level. Because okay. if I'm feeling really 
like shy and scared. And I try to strike up a conversation with someone who's just like roaring to go and talking to like, who's just like talking to everyone. And, and they just stepped into the room for a second. You know, they're just trying to get something from the table. They're, they're, they're thirsty and you're standing next to like the water and they're getting water and you're like, how are you? You know, type of thing. And they're like, oh, I'm great. I'm doing fine. I got to go, you know, because their, their energy is, is so different and so like, out there that they don't even see you yeah let alone like <laughs> like get their attention you know and so you have to be aware of where the person's at mm-hmm. and what yeah. energy they're looking that that they're in now um now there is a way to get there and it's it's a matter of of working up your confidence and and the energy inside you like when i say energy i'm, mm-hmm. I'm thinking I, i'm describing like how you're feeling are you feeling excited are you feeling energized? Are you feeling like bursting out the seams of, of, of uh, joy, you know? <laughs> or just can't wait to just brighten up someone's day type of thing? Or are you feeling more like relaxed and just feeling, feeling in the mood to have someone approach you instead? Because I mean, that's totally fine too. It just depends on where are you and what are you most comfortable with right now? Okay. And that's Which okay. could be different on different days. Yeah, it is. I mean, there's been days where I don't want to talk to anyone. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have hyper date moments where oh you yeah. show up? You do. Okay. Oh yeah. Because I'm torn on that. I have hi- I have hyper moments, but usually then when I'm walking into the social situation, suddenly, no matter how hyper I am, I'm like, which might be because of those younger experiences of having a lot of you know maybe failures and Mm -hmm. you know i didn't have a lot of successes so there's always something in me that's like oh you might not you know might not make it yeah but that's okay too like okay if you like it's all about there there's this one uh this little kid that i once saw he was i don't remember exactly what he was doing but he he made a mistake and fell flat on his face. Okay. Okay. And but immediately he jumped up and started dancing. He did the, the floss. Okay. And <laughs> that's the perfect dance if you fall on your face. I know, right? That's the perfect like, first reaction. It, it was so <laughs> shocking to me of like the energy that he was able to present. Like he made a huge mistake, and yet he's like, I'm cool. I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll you make know? you laugh now, and I'll everyone will laugh. Laugh. turn and around on it. That's right. That's right. And it was like, that's it, he, he wasn't on stage or anything. He was just like doing. He, he was in kind of in his own world at first, and he made this mistake, and everyone's now has their eyes on him, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like that's so funny. That's so awesome. I love that. And it was such a great way to handle that energy of like, of that nervousness and like oh man i can't believe i just did that i'm so sorry type of thing it's like it wasn't that at all he wasn't he wasn't trying mm-hmm. to like ask for anyone's forgiveness or, or apologize or 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 like he he didn't he, he's he made the mistake but it was like a really minor social mistake he fell on the floor right. that's yeah. it you know but you can let it but if you can you let, let it, it destroy you yeah or, or you can make it or you can make it be you you know, and he he chose the, the 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 path of like you know, that's all right, and I'm still gonna use this energy to build my energy. You know, because even mistakes can be amazing if you know how to just roll with them. I love that, and if you f- forgive yourself immediately for your mm-hmm. mistakes, other people forgive you immediately for your mistakes. Yes, yes, you're absolutely so, right. So yeah, if you're really you're hard on yourself for your mistakes, other people might be really hard immediately. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a very interesting life analogy. <laughs> yeah, the faster you can forgive yourself, the faster mm-hmm. other people can forgive you. The, um, anyway, so back to, back to the, uh, the story of being in the room. So, so I've built up my confidence to go talk to someone. So at first, I would consider me the lone wolf, where I'm mm-hmm. not talking to anyone, uh, and I'm not standing in any circles. You, the less uh, confident version of the lone wolf? I would say or? I'm confident okay. in the fact that I'm there and I want to be there and I know how to handle myself. Okay. You know, I'm just 
I'm just don't quite decide. I'm, I haven't quite decided on whether I want to talk to someone or not, or wait for someone to talk to me. Mm -hmm. um, decided to talk to someone else, so I approached someone with the same energy, and now we're having a conversation. Okay. So I'm officially a wallflower <clears throat> at this point. I'm having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone, and it's a quiet conversation, and it's and it's a good conversation. Like this, ener the energy between us is kind of building, mm -hmm. and and it's interesting, and it's building my confidence. So at mm -hmm. this point, we, I can then steer this conversation to, like, let's go join a circle, you know, of people. So it's not just us. Nice. So I invite I like this, this person to come with me mm -hmm. as we go look for a circle of people. And at this time, mm -hmm. I'm having a conversation with them, but I also, in the corner of my mind, is deciding on which circle of people I want to step okay. into. I love know? this. <laughs> this so, is fascinating. So when I step into a circle of people <laughs> having a conversation... I automatically assume that they're going to accept me because nine out of the ten, they will. Okay. Nine out of ten, they're going to assume you already know someone else in the circle as well. Hmm. Like, All right. So <laughs> especially if you look at the person next to you and go, hey, how are you? Kind of <laughs> then everyone assumes, oh, they must know that person. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, That's and even if you admit you don't, like, what's your name? What are you interested in type of thing? Mm -hmm. It, uh, it doesn't matter because they still assume you know someone else in the, mm -hmm. in the circle. And you're just being friendly. Uh, and, and you also brought someone with you if this other person decided to tag along. Mm -hmm. So which means you do actually know someone else in the circle. <laughs> so That's awesome. You've provided your own solution. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, and I've also provided, a, if, if I can't strike up a conversation with, else, with anyone else in the, in the circle, I still have this person to continue the conversation with, right? Okay. So when you're in a circle, the the first thing to understand is you're not ever going to talk to everyone at once. Mm -hmm. That's the first mistake that lone wolves make is they mm -hmm. feel like they have to say something to the whole room mm -hmm. um, or the whole group. And it's never that case. Mm -hmm. Like You don't want to ever try to get the whole uh, circle's attention unless mm -hmm. you're the organizer. Like that's the yeah. only person who who has the um, like authority to capture people's attention, you know? Um, but that's a, that's a whole other story. Okay. The, um, when you're in the circle, you, and you listen to the conversations that are happening, right? Like there's, there's ma mostly there's one or two, there's, let me repeat that. There's normally two or three conversations happening at once in a circle. And, and the rest of the people are just listening in, um, listening to the different conversations, and they listen right. to the ones that's the most interesting Because there's them. a lot of wingmen mm -hmm. that are in the circle listening. That's right. And then there's several. And a bunch of wallflowers as well. Okay. You got it. You got oh, it. I keep thinking of wallflowers as someone who's literally on the wall, but you oh, mean no, no, a I'm, listener. I'm, think, I'm talking listeners. Quiet yeah. listener, yeah. Quiet listeners, yep. Yep, you got it. And um, the... Someone else might be having this conversation is really interesting, and I want to have I want to say something now, right? So instead mm -hmm. of saying it to the person who is in the conversation because they're already in a conversation with someone else, and that's the reason why they said it. And unless they're looking at me, I don't talk to them. I turn around okay. and say my comment to someone right or left of me. Hmm. Okay. And because sometimes, yeah, if you mm -hmm. you you're like feeling so friendly, because so, yeah, okay, so I guess I do feel friendly sometimes, and I'll burst into somebody's, you know, burst a comment into someone's conversation. That's it's not right. always received well because they're talking. Mm -hmm. I don't but know. you can you can do that. It depends okay. on where your energy is. Like if you're just ex like as excited about the topic as they are, then you can jump right in and say your comment and say it with confidence and valid and and validate it with your energy and then they turn around and have the conversation with you now you now become okay. their wingman okay you know but it all depends on where your energy is at that point okay. is the conversation something that you're confident in do you know a lot about that conversation if not okay and if you it, if you're then, just bursting out a random comment and then right. it's kind of and it doesn't add value to the conversation and mm -hmm. if you're not careful you know you really want to whatever you say adds value and if you're not sure then you just whisper it to the person next to you. Okay. So. <laughs> these are really good techniques. Right? <laughs> no one thinks about these things, and we just go and blunder our way through things, and we're never think maybe I can 
piece this together, or tear it apart and piece it back together. Yeah, that's basically what I had to do. Figuring out what's going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, it, none of this came naturally to me. It was just me observing people, making mm -hmm. my mistakes, trying it out again, and wow. then just constantly just practicing and making new friends and talking. And you seeing know. what worked, yeah. Mm -hmm. Trying this thing, and if it worked well, then kind of being like, well, why did that work well? That's right. Yeah. And Not that many notes. people are analytical of social things, so yeah. it's helpful. It's true. We, when it comes to social things, we tend, we tend to have a lot of trauma in our social um, experience, and mm -hmm. trauma tends to prevent us from actually seeing what's happening. So okay. we get caught up in our emotions, and that prevents us from actually knowing what's going on and how to improve the situation. Mm, yeah. So. Especially if you felt like you were the, I guess, victim, yeah. whether it doesn't necessarily mean you were outright bullied or something, but it could mean you were, you did something awkward that was off-putting, mm -hmm. and then you got bad reaction, and so you felt really hurt mm -hmm. and felt like the victim, but really it's something constructive you can actually... Yes work on yes. but it's hard to look at it that way when you felt so hurt it's true <clears throat> yeah you're absolutely right mm -hmm. you're yeah. right you described that very well okay good <laughs> cool so, but yeah so let's say you whisper this comment to the person next to you and they're like yeah you're so right i was like i know and then and then they start having the conversation with you about as a, like a side topic based off of what their conversation is. Okay. But the energy is really, like you've really connected with this person. Mm -hmm. So you start having this conversation and you're getting more and more excited. So it's like, instead of a whisper, mm -hmm. now it's a normal like tone. Yeah. And, and now because you're so excited mm -hmm. about it, and also the person that you brought in with you is also mm -hmm. listening into your conversation. So, yeah. and you have a handful of other people now listening because they're feeling the energy from you yeah they're feeling the excitement of whatever you're having a conversation on okay so now you're, you're slowly building, building this energy mm -hmm. with this person and and that energy as it builds and you get more and more excited about whatever that topic is then everyone else starts to quiet down mm -hmm. and the next thing you know you are the speaker of the circle <laughs> that can't be that sounds too mad, too good to be true. <laughs> but it, it's all but about that, that energy of like how confident you feel and, yeah. and how connected you feel to that one person or mm -hmm. the two people. You mm -hmm. know, you only need one person to really connect with. Yeah. And, and to really be excited and feel like you're part of something and to, um, to, to really feel like this was worth your time. You only need one. Yeah, and it, and it's like you're slowly working your way into a group mm -hmm. in a way that's palatable to people, and that like isn't like I'm. I think there's always people who can just jump into a group and everybody loves them, you know. But there that's is. probably a rare person. It is. And most people need to ease their way into it, you know. I'm one of those people. So like, I can never yeah. just walk into the room and just. Fill it with my energy. You know? Yeah. That's not me. Nope. <laughs> so. Unless, I mean, there's groups where I probably am a lot more comfortable than other groups. Mm -hmm. But that's not the norm for me. Yeah. Ditto. Ditto. So, so there's one more step to this. Okay. Okay. I thought we so, reached the pinnacle. No, no, this isn't the pinnacle. <laughs> okay. All right. All so right. you build up the root. You build up your energy. You're talking as like the most excited person in this circle. Everyone okay. else is listening because it's such an interesting topic. <laughs> and they're like, not only are you winging off with this person, but mm -hmm. this person's jumping into the conversation. This person's jumping in and is like, what about this? You know, or I had this thought about that or, you know. <laughs> and so you're having this wonderful conversation with everyone in the circle now. Okay. It's getting late now. And you're like, okay. well, you know, I got to go. But would you guys like to come over and watch a movie with me? Okay. So, and they're all like, Hell yeah, let's do this. <laughs> so they all like come over to your house and you watch a movie. And you are now the organizer. Boom. <laughs> oh, you I the see. Event, and you what have now you're created doing. the after party, and everyone's coming oh. to your after party. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, so you're not saying you have to stick in one role no. in an evening. You, you, you can become the things you want to become mm -hmm. if you understand the process. Yep, that's right. 
you can become whatever you want ah, if you understand the process. That's so cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where you want to go with it. So did you invite, you just invited the group. You didn't invite mm -hmm. the whole room. You don't have to. Unless you get to that level. You can, but that takes multiple times coming to the same event or okay. if it's like a multiple event or there's there's already a handful of people who know you there. Yeah. It's like it, like getting to that point where you can invite the whole room takes a lot more time and finesse. Like you have to be able to do this regularly to mm -hmm. build those connections with people where okay. people start to remember your name and remember mm -hmm. your face when you walk into the room. Okay. And and when you get and really all it takes is to do that same process of walking into the room, feeling your energy where it is, and slowly building it up if you want to. And like it's mm -hmm. perfectly fine to just sit back and observe people. I mean you don't have mm -hmm. to be the center of attention. And that's the one mm -hmm. thing that um, I didn't understand as a kid is mm -hmm. you don't have to be a, the center of attention to feel like you belong. Yes. You can just be I grateful relate. to be there. And that's it. Yeah, because it's a funny thing. I have realized at these moments in my life, like I'll be at a party or a gathering or dance or whatever it is, and there's those people you see standing by themselves, and you always think they're, there's someone standing by themselves, you mm -hmm. know, and then you go about your thing. But when I'm standing by myself, I usually feel incredibly... You know, I don't know where I'm at now. I'd have to think over the last few years. But, like, I know growing up, for sure, if I was by myself, I would just feel so awkward and out of place. And, like, who's going to talk to me? Is anyone going to talk to me? You know, that was kind of rooted in those junior high experiences that didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. ever after, you're always afraid that you're never going to get someone to talk to or whatever. And... Um, so that just helps you, you know, the, the beginning is just being like, I can stand here by myself. Yeah, that's right. And actually, no one's having a problem with it. Yeah, that's right. Because I'm one of those people who's standing by themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have a problem with people standing by themselves. Why do I think other people think I'm weird for standing by myself? You are absolutely right. And, so, and that's where it all starts is like being mm -hmm. comfortable with that and being okay with that. And then... And, and when you're okay with that... Yeah. And, and you're feeling grateful for the moment. Because that's the key, really, is, is starting with gratitude. Because when okay. you, that is the foundation that all of this starts with. Hmm. Is if you can find gratitude and, and get that found, your footing, then you can think outward. And that is, hmm. that is the next key, is when you're no longer worried about your own well-being, you can start thinking about someone else's. Okay, so instead of standing there being like, mm -hmm. I look so awkward, people can tell I look awkward, people think it's weird that I'm, they might not know I have any friends at all, they mm -hmm. might think I don't have any friends, instead of revolving around those being like, gosh, I'm grateful to be in this beautiful, look at the beautiful decorations and look mm -hmm. at all the people having fun, I'm so grateful that they get to have fun and mm -hmm. there's this food, you know, whatever it is, I don't know. Is that what you mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. Think of the good things. Uh -huh. Because it mm -hmm. also opens up your mind to think positively and see opportunities then help someone else. Okay. Because you, when you're in that state, then you can see someone else who is feeling really shy and awkward. Okay. And, and you're like, you know, that person probably needs someone to talk to them. And you're now approaching them with mm -hmm. this confidence already. You don't need them. You don't mm -hmm. need to feel validated by them. You don't need them to even say anything. You don't, you, you don't need anything from them, which means that you're able to give them something. Mm -hmm. And you're giving them a little bit of time and attention, and that's it, to show them that they're seen and heard and cared for. That makes and, sense. And when you step into that role, then that helps to have this conversation that works well, you know. You're, you're in the right place to be thinking the right thoughts to have a really good conversation with this person. Yeah, so. and thinking about them and their needs, not mm -hmm. just thinking, I need to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. I need to look like I'm talking to somebody and that I'm not alone. I, 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 I. Yep. You know, right. thinking and maybe they don't want to be standing alone. And it's that energy that, that ruins the moment of like that I energy even, even the person who is confident enough to step into the room and start, like, 
speaking to anyone and this high energy, if they're still in that state of I need someone to talk to you, or I need to be the most important person in the room, or I like their their thoughts are inward, people are going mm -hmm. to feel that. The, mm -hmm. What they say is going to come out very selfish, you know? It's not going to be validating. It's not going to be helpful to anyone. So everyone's going to mm -hmm. be feeling a little awkward around this person. And it won't get them so far. It and might get them, get them so far. some attention or it might get them to a certain point, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, people might walk away feeling like, do I really like that person? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. That's right. And, and your, your conversations with that person are always going to be a little off. Mm -hmm. And even if they invite you to their house afterwards, you don't really want to go because mm -hmm. you just didn't feel right around this person. And it's because they're still in their heads. They're still hmm. not thinking outward. And, Interesting. And if they're, if they're still thinking inward, then it feels unsafe because you don't, because mm -hmm. they don't fully see you. Mm. They don't fully understand what your needs are and how to make sure that they're going to create an environment for you to feel safe when you do come to their house. Interesting. Yeah, because their, their primary need is their needs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and right. they... Maybe it's a survival, being in a survival mode mm -hmm. or something you where you're the focus because you're, you're afraid you're not going to survive this. But when you're the focus, other people are like, I don't know if I can trust you to take care of my needs or other people's needs. And a lot yeah. of that's in, in the book um, and what we've talked about today of, of all those different stages of the five roles as well as like uh, the, the right way to approach social like the right way to, the right mindset to step into being someone who gets out there and is willing to talk to people. So, so you've practiced this many times and then is that what you saw was that with each time you did it, you got better mm -hmm. and you got more comfortable with it and enjoyed it more and then got, made these little progresses? Yes. Oh, and mm -hmm. then you finally got to the point of inviting people over. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That's right. <laughs> so, what was my major breakthrough through was actually um, the friends I made in college. Okay. So I made friends with Weston, who is the owner of Combi Productions now. Yeah. And, and then also the other friends. What's interesting is I made friends with everyone who was a part of the company before they were a part of the company. Okay. Uh, and, and they just slowly started like meeting each other. Whether it oh, was funny. was my doing or whatever, I don't know. Oh, just but a coincidence. It was like, just, kind of like a... some of it was coincidence. Huh. Other times it was because I introduced them. Um, but most of the time it was, it was coincidence. And uh, anyway, it was that group of friends in college that really helped me see the difference. Because mm -hmm. all my life, I was always a part of like one or two friends. I was never, I was never a part of like a full group of friends and what it felt like to have all these different types of people who come together and just enjoy each other's company. You know, I didn't have that that mob of friends in high school. Yeah. But in college I did. And it helped me see, like, it was such a well-balanced group of people that, and, and each person had a defined role in the group, a, a one that was very consistent. Hmm. that it helped me see those different roles. Uh, since then, I've, I've, I see it in multiple different settings and in multiple different ways. But it was that first group of friends that I was like, oh, wow. Like, Weston's the organizer. Jake yep. is the speaker. Um, yeah. I was, yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> right? Jake's yep. the speaker. Yep. And then Jake's, um, Drew is his wingman. Like, Drew and mm -hmm. you get Drew and Jake together, and they just rip off each other all the time. <laughs> yep, I can see that. And mm -hmm. Drew's kind of a calmer energy, he and is. Drake Jake is a bigger, boisterous, oh, yeah. take over the whole room conversation energy. Yes. Yeah, yes, you're is. right. Yeah. Or or Weston <laughs> will be his his wingman because uh, an organizer when the whole event is set up will tend to be a wingman or a wallflower. Mm, they don't necessarily, they're not necessarily the main speaker of the of the group. Huh. In many cases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just kind of works out that way. It does, right? 
Yeah. And then I was the wallflower for the group. I still somewhat am. I tend to be very quiet. Mm -hmm. And I only I guess so, yeah. tend to talk to the person next to me for the most okay. part. Okay. Uh, and uh, and that's it just okay. Goes on from there. Like and that's okay. Whatever someone is comfortable and fits into is. There's no good or bad. That's right. Uh, there is no good or bad except for how you feel in it and and your own perception of what whether it is or isn't. Now the um, the what's interesting too is like you still are able to connect really closely with anyone if you want to and that that happens in a one-on-one -on -one conversation more than anything so being able to have the confidence to just have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone is honestly good it, it is that is the great place to be you don't ever mm -hmm. have to be the voiturous person in the room mm -hmm. like that's that's not needed and if you do desire to at least, you know, maybe approach it or mm -hmm. figure out if there's a way you can at least experience that. The best way to do is to start small and start with one person mm -hmm. and, you know, gradually work up to it and not put all this pressure on yourself to jump in, which is what That's I had right. done for a long time until I kind of realized similar things as this is of like being okay with my quietness yeah. and being okay with maybe people approaching me was a big one for me. That's huge, yeah. And and just and, and realizing there are those people in the room who are on the sides and sometimes those people seem really intriguing because they're not worried about being in the group mm -hmm. actually. And so they actually make people want to approach them. Interesting, yeah. Because they're so comfortable standing there by themselves. I don't know. I yeah, so Holding your holding your space can kind of make you that person who people are like, well, I want to talk to that person because mm -hmm. they don't they're not dying to talk to me, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah, you got it. So they're they're in their own like they they found their footing type of mm -hmm. thing. They're they're just grateful to be there type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's a great place to be. But the uh, anyway. Before we finish, I want to come back to a quick thought of mine of, like, if you want practice to be, like, the speaker or the organizer, yeah. it's, a, it's a matter of having different types of friends that allow you to be that. And so here in Conv, here in Conv, I'm very used to being, like, the wallflower, and I don't really speak up, and I only talk to one person, like, one-on-one -on -one most of the mm -hmm. time. And I'm completely confident with that. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. But if I tried to step out of that and tried to be like the speaker of this group, it would oh it always as has always felt a little offsetting to me. Especially mm -hmm. since Jake is always like wanting to be the speaker. Like it is hard <laughs> to compete with him. Yeah. Like so it's so it's important to that. understand that and and find a group of friends that are a little bit more shy mm -hmm. and the they hmm. almost want you to be the speaker. Like, ah. So I have I have a handful of other friends that they they're very quiet, and mm -hmm. they, their favorite thing to do is Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, great! D &D or, <laughs> That's awesome. Right. So <laughs> when when I go to that group of friends, I'm the most energetic and boisterous. Uh, boisterous person in the room I'm and I'm not ah. that I like I'm not that excited and that full of energy but when I'm with them compared to them I am you yeah know? that makes sense I'm super I can see that and super you have like, loud compared to to them and and I mm -hmm. always have something to say so it's like and they're okay with it because it helps them so they don't feel the need to speak they get nervous they're like i have to say something i feel like i need to say something and then they kind of just like <laughs> but then someone else speaks up and they're like oh cool <sighs> fine yeah you, you just keep talking you're like that's what i'm here for <laughs> yep, that's right that's right so just like finding that group of friends that really want you to say something because they don't want to say something interesting because that's i remember there's a girl in high school who was really quiet and shy and that was kind of her identity you know mm -hmm. And she seemed really comfortable with it. I don't remember feeling like she seemed awkward with it. I don't know if I ever talked to her or found out, but um, she only she would know. But um, I did, someone told me that they were at her house or something for an evening family gathering or something, and she was so outgoing with her family. Uh -huh. And they were like, oh my gosh, I never saw this side of her. So that makes sense, because I've always, mm -hmm. I've always wondered that about myself, that there's, 
for me, yeah, I've always had that side of me, like, I want to be that outgoing person. And then, um, you know, pressuring myself and wanting me to be that, but then going, like, but there's also those people who are completely comfortable, and I've always, no like, noticed this, who are completely, seem at least, completely comfortable being the quiet, calm one. Mm -hmm. And they don't seem to ever, like, be dying to be that outgoing person. I know that some, some people definitely don't have any desire. Like, they just, they're like, I don't really feel that need, but I think that person's awesome, you know? Whereas right, there's yeah. others of us, like, want to be that and want to have that chance. But I think that's a good point that people are at different energy levels mm -hmm. and they live maybe their whole lives generally at different energy levels. So if mm -hmm. you're with someone who's like a way higher than you, um, they just might be a higher energy level than you. And right. so to push yourself to try to compete or, with them or, or be more than just them. a little too witty. Like, you know, they, they, they think on their feet way too fast. So you just mm -hmm. can't really like get something out to say fast enough when they're around. Yeah, so so you'll you'll always so like trying to to be that person or compete with that person or keep up with that person, you know, maybe accept yourself and yep, say yourself. maybe there's yeah. people that I I'm around which I've found like there's people that I'm boisterous compared to them and they mm -hmm. see me as a huge extrovert. Mm -hmm. And then there's other people that are their their group is so much more boisterous than me. They always see me as the introvert. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem like in those those more energetic groups I can really ever, you know, no matter how many times I'm like, this time I'm going to be the loud one, usually it doesn't happen that way. Or they just, they have more dopamine or, you know, who, more... Who knows what it is, yeah. Something that that, keep, that they have a higher, louder energy and, and it's, you know, I don't need to <clears throat> try to be them. I can That's be true. the them for someone else. You got it. You got it. You spot it spot on. And it's, yeah. and that's a great place to be. Like when you finally realize that, it mm -hmm. it it's like releasing all this weight off your chest. It's like oh, I don't have to be someone I'm not. And that is a relief. <laughs> Yay. You know? yeah. I can enjoy the pers that person for who they are. That's and right. I can enjoy me for who I am in this moment. That's right. You don't have to compete. You don't have mm -hmm. to feel like you're anything less. Because you're not. Like, you are your own person, and mm -hmm. you have your strengths as well. And it's just knowing those strengths and being confident in that and allowing someone else to shine for the time that they're shining. That's so cool. Because you all you will have your time to shine, too. I think the, the one book that helped me realize that was a book called Quiet. Okay. Um, I forget the author's name, but if you search a book called Quiet, it's mm -hmm. a book on introverts and how powerful uh, introverts can be. So it's, and it helped me realize how unique I am as a mm -hmm. in, as an introvert, and mm -hmm. and my own strengths that I felt like were weaknesses before, you know. And yeah. it changed that, and it changed my confidence in many ways. There was another thought that came to my mind while you were talking, but it it came and it went. Okay, mm -hmm. well, hopefully something will spark it, because there's one, the, oh, this yeah. bookmark is in this cool chapter called Play Theory. Oh, yeah, that would be a great one to talk about. It stuck out to me, and I want to know what the heck this is. So Play Theory is a, um, Play Theory was a club in college. Okay. So I was a part of this club called Play Theory, and the four principles that they teach in the club were very useful for, for my social skills, like being able to... Uh, let go and play. I don't know if that's the first one. Is that the first one? Uh, be present. Be present. Let go and play. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, say yes. Say yes and. And, mm -hmm. and which has changed since the, since I wrote the book. But and then the okay. last one is look outward. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like quizzing you. <laughs> see if you can get your own. You get the, my own things. things but I, these are very improv comedy principles it is. too. It is improv. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Principles. Yeah. Kay. So it originally started as improv, but they're focused mm -hmm. more on the, uh, the, the like, wellness side of those principles, not so much the improv side. Okay. All right, so play theory. The first thing is be present. And this goes along with basically what I said before of, like, um, stepping into gratitude. And mm -hmm. because gratitude is the first 
emotion that you can control that moves you into being present. Because hmm. someone who's grateful is also present. You know? Really? Mm -hmm. I've never connected those two. Yeah, it, it took me a while to like connect it myself, but it, hmm. it just clicked one day. It's like gratitude is presence. Because negativity takes you out of the present because you're mm -hmm. analyzing now. That's right. You're either too... Um, too worried about the future or depressed about the past. Hmm. You know, you're you're not if if you're worried or or stressed or depressed, it's because of something in the future or the past. It's not really something that's going on in the present. Wow, that's really. I feel like that needs a book. <laughs> <laughs> Gratitude brings you in the present. It does. I don't feel like I've heard that concept, so I really like that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> if I have, I don't remember. So that's, that's really good. I'll share with you. Um, or had anyone connect, connect us to. And that's, that's the key to being present. Because when, mm -hmm. uh, when you're present, uh, it allows you to see everything that's going on. It allows you to feel what other people are feeling. And, and it inspires you to then take the next move. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're not being present, again, you're either too worried about the future of what's happening, uh, what's happening in the future, or you're stressed and depressed about the past of what went wrong, you know? Yeah, and, it, and then you're too focused on yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you're too focused on the, yourself, you can't respond to someone, mm -hmm. you can't interact with them. Like, you have to be able to hear them mm -hmm. and be in the moment with what they're thinking and feeling in order to react with them that's right that's so. right so that's the the key to being present the next okay. one is letting go and play so okay. the concept is basically um, letting go of those worries and those fears um, letting go of anything that is preventing you from from playing you know from being there and playing is basically I love the the word play because it's like you're not trying to do anything, you know. Mm -hmm. Trying is, is like I really hope this person likes me, you know. Mm. Versus playing with the idea of this person possibly liking you, is like. You don't care whether they like you or not. You're just gonna poke them and see what happens, you know. <laughs> that's that's playing. Yeah. Um, and it's it doesn't matter <laughs> what their response is. Mm -hmm you're just going to play with whether whatever comes. It's like, oh, they got angry. Mm, you sassy thing. You know, type of thing. You know, versus Because trying is an antithesis to being in the moment. Because mm -hmm. you're analyzing, you're trying to manipulate things, you're trying, you're trying to control things. You're trying to get something to happen the way you want. Yes, yes. And That's playing is, is letting go mm -hmm. and letting whatever happens, happens. And you might say something wrong and someone might be upset. but. Right. If you're, if you're not living in the moment, you will never be fr let yourself be free. Mm -hmm. That's right. Am I putting things together? No, that's great. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Cool. You got it. So that's letting go and play. And okay. then there's the say yes and. I forget what they switched this to. Uh, I do like the say yes and, so we're just going to go that with that for now. Um, oh, the, that group switched it. Yeah, the great, yeah, play theory um, hmm. switched their, their four principles. They reworded say yes and because say yes and hmm. is a very improv thing. Yeah. And they're trying to um, help people who um, who are afraid of improv. So they're mm -hmm. trying to kind of like give them a little bit of improv without letting them know it's improv and say yes and is very improv. Oh, okay. So and yeah, and that that's it, that's a huge improv principle which mm -hmm. is a really good one but it's not true 100% of the time. It's and, and so what is the principle? Because you know it. Okay. Like, yes, I can, I can tell it. Uh, it's basically like if you're on stage and one person is like taking on this character like I'm a squirrel and the other partner comes up and they're like, what are you doing? And you're like, I'm eating a squirrel, a nut, you know. And the person's like, no, you're not. You're not a squirrel. You're not, you're not eating nuts. You're crazy. It's like so you're kind of shutting down that's a, that's their a invention. That's not yes and. That's, that's yeah. the opposite of yes ending. Yeah. So yes ending would be like, oh, well, let me help you find some more nuts. 
you know? Yeah, you're like... He was like, I'm accepting the fact that he's a squirrel, mm -hmm. and now I'm adding the fact that I'm giving him more nuts. Yes, yes, you're a squirrel. And what else can we do with squirrels instead of no, which sometimes with skilled improvers, I've seen them shut down each other if they can yeah. tell it would be really funny. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so it's a skill you develop, because I've seen, I've seen it happen, but it works when you don't do it very often. Right. And you, it's in the, in the right moment, it can be really funny, which is why no improv concept is 100%. Yes. And, right. and it doesn't necessarily mean you have to say, um, yes and. Y yeah, it, it, there's, there's, it, it's a bit, a bit simplistic for what I've been seeing happening in improv because it's not like you can't ever, two characters can't ever disagree. I'm maybe analyzing this too much right now, speaking mm -hmm. of not being in the moment, but <laughs> the two characters can, you know, sometimes argue with each other, and that's interesting. Right. Like, you can argue with each other's characters, and, you know, so it's not quite as simple as, like, 100% of the time you always go along with everything everyone's always doing, but mm -hmm. the, the idea is their real you accept each other's reality generally and it's better to 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 go with the flow with each other than shut each other down yes yes Kay. and and i think there's also a higher um i think there's a higher rule there that you're describing too mm -hmm. with the yes and thing because it's there i'm gonna actually change uh, take a, a step back and describe a situation in real, like, in a, an actual situation where you're, like, yes-anding something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, in real life. Because this is more than just improv. It's yeah. like, you you have a friend who you're you're at school working on some type of um, um, paper next to each other, right? And one's like, oh, dude, I am so hungry. And the other one's like, and then you yes-and it by, like, oh, if you are hungry, right? It's like, oh, man, yeah, I could really go for a burrito right now. You know, that's, like, yes-anding the situation. Right. Versus, you now, now there is a higher up um, um, rule in the fact of knowing the situation really well and understanding exactly what their intentions, values are, and goals are. You can do a yes and with a no by like saying, "Dude, you really want to finish this test, like." That I'm like, you want to get an A-plus in this exam, right? So you don't want to leave right now to go get food, do you? It's like, oh, no, no, I don't. So let's stay and finish this. You know, we got, a, we got 30 more minutes that we're going to focus on this. Yeah, you know? and I think that's a, that, that also applies kind of to improv where I've been like, well, the yes and isn't always exactly the perfect way to say that you're handling every situation in improv. Mm -hmm. It's like sometimes it's better for the person to be encouraged you know, yes, I validate that you're hungry. Yes, your reality is that you're hungry and that's important. Yes, your needs are important. Mm -hmm. But you might want to prioritize a different need more and then you'll get your other need met as well. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> positive, right. Positive, positive, positive. That's right. It's, it's, um, so when it comes to saying no to someone, it's, it's really important of like of validating something um, and making sure that you know a higher value that they're trying to aim for and understanding mm -hmm. where they're trying to go. Like, mm -hmm. for example, being in a situation where you're in a converse, in a group and you want to say something to the group, uh, and I, I made the mistake multiple times of like trying to talk to the whole group at once. Like, mm -hmm. that is like the biggest mistake you can possibly make, especially when mm -hmm. you're new to the group because half the people aren't listening to you anyway. They're in another conversation. And um, that almost, like, it's almost not right to, uh, to, um, to yes and that, you know? Or mm -hmm. how can you yes and that? Everyone's going on at once, you know? It's like, how can someone do that? So one of my friends, a great friend of mine, would actually, when I, when I was doing things like that, he would actually stop the conversation and go, wait, 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 what were you saying, Jason? And, like, he'd have me repeat myself because I would say it so quiet and so unconfidently <laughs> that like to expect the whole room to respond yeah, is... and, and then I still expected the whole room to respond right I was <laughs> I was setting myself up for disaster from the beginning you know okay yeah but this one friend of mine would like whoa 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 what was that Jason 
you know, he would stop the conversation for me. And it was like so helpful for him. And it was it was his way of also like yes ending the conversation, you know, he, where he'd hear mm -hmm. me and and then validate what I wanted to say. Like he'd hear what I had to say and then he'd like say something to it. And if it wasn't really like if it wasn't helping the, the situation or if it didn't elevate the conversation, he'd be like, OK, that's weird. And then we move on. to. But he at least mm -hmm. stopped the conversation and allowed mm -hmm. me to say my thing, you know. Um, and how did you come to the realization that your approach wasn't working or that it, like did he help you cha realize that yeah. or did you realize it totally on your own? Um, it was a mixture of both. Like, Because um, I've had this question of how do people help me? Looking back on times when people have helped me, I realized I was doing something wrong versus they didn't say anything and let me figure it out on my own. I'm like, which one was better for me? <laughs> I think it was a mixture of both where because he did that, I gained such uh, a higher respect for him. Mm -hmm. um, and I also observed him and how he worked the room okay. as well as a handful of other people who were a little bit more on my energy and how they worked the room. Okay. And then slowly, bit by bit, I realized, like, wait a second. They're really just talking one on one, and I'm interrupting their conversation. And then getting disappointed. Yeah. Myself. Myself, because they didn't quite catch on to what I was saying, or mm -hmm. you know, and I wasn't quite in that conversation to begin with. Or anyway, it was. I I honestly cannot pinpoint the moment when I realized it, but okay. it was just like a slow movement in, like, oh, that's actually not something you do. <laughs> try to talk to everyone at once. My bad. Unless it, there's just the right circumstance or mm -hmm. the... I'm trying to think if, if, it, if I've had that happen. There's, there's a few I circumstances mean, where it's like, all right, everyone, we're about to eat. Stop, stop, stop talking so we can, like, say our gratitudes mm -hmm. or whatever. Which is an organizer. Right. Yeah, that's the organizer's responsibility. And that's why mm -hmm. I was like, in the before I was saying, like, there's a few rare occasions where the organizer can get everyone's attention because mm -hmm. they're the one who's in charge of the space, first of all. Yeah. So they're like, the police are coming, we need to go. Or <laughs> you know, that could be a thing. Or it's yeah. like, you guys are too loud. The, uh, the neighbors important. are very frustrated with our loudness, so everyone <laughs> needs to calm down. You know? Yeah. Which I, I guess one thing I've kind of just kind of to branch off randomly for a second on the topic of social norms and stuff. Like one thing I, I feel like this is kind of something people know, like it's my party, I'll cry if I want to. Like if you throw a party, it's kind of to a certain level, it's your party. It's mm -hmm. about everybody, but um, I kind of feel the same way about people's Facebook walls. Like I kind of realize like when I argue with people, <laughs> which I try not to argue anymore at all, but <laughs> we all get roped in. Or I try to discuss, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and you know, like you make comments to people that is like, well, here's my point of view, and I've realized, well, that's their wall. They get the last say. Mm -hmm. I feel like, like they mm -hmm. get the last comment because I started realizing, like, when people wouldn't let me have my own last comment on my wall, they just kept going and would not like let me make Finish. my point uh -huh. and have control over my space and my reality mm -hmm. it felt really rude it's like it felt like you throw a party and someone comes in and wants to derail it from the whole purpose yes of what you got people together for and that's not going to be received well which is not really what i'm saying what you it's, were it's doing true. like it's, with it's true. the You're announcement right. it's not but being received well it's like it's throwing people off and, it, and it's changing the vibe of the room and and other people will see that too and you don't mm -hmm. need like they're not going to be invited to the next party. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. <laughs> if you're, if you're too, too self-centered, yeah, if they're too self-centered and thinking about themselves uh, that they can't see what other people need. And whether they're the speaker or the organizer, if they get too caught up in themselves, they yeah. won't be invited to which, the next one. Which I could see as someone that's a speaker, maybe uh, their struggle, whereas mm -hmm. the quiet people, their struggle is feeling like they want to be participating more maybe the speaker's struggle in life is like overtaking other people's things and not realizing that they've done it. Yeah. That would be that, interesting. That can be a struggle. It's, yeah. I, I know for me, it's the struggle is, is deciding on who to invite or, mm -hmm. or who to be, spend time with. Like when, you, when you're really good at these different steps of really connecting with people mm -hmm. and making friends with them, then you have to 
be picky on who you're going to be friends with. Hmm. And you have a lot of people who want to be your friend, and it's kind of heartbreaking <coughs> to, to, like, let, let them go. And it's like, and I, I don't have time. Pick and choose. And yeah, I have to pick and choose wisely on what's going to help my life move forward, you know. That's a whole topic. And that's that's completely other, like, you're no longer struggling with friends. You're struggling with who to, who to be friends with, you know. Oh, right. I feel like we have very similar progressions with that. Mm -hmm. we got to finish this we're, last yeah, one. Yeah, we're going on we're a lot on, of... We're on a <laughs> tangent here. Okay. And I think we've definitely passed <laughs> the hour. <laughs> let's, let's circle back. So we got one more. You know, we'll circle back here. Okay. And it, and it is look outward. So after you can be present... You were able to let go of all your, your traumas and fears and just play. Mm -hmm. Then you start to say yes and to the different people. Are, and, and you look outward. So it's, it's the concept of looking outward is, is helping other people look good. You know, helping them mm. save face. It's, it's mm -hmm. making sure that what you say and do helps other people look good. You know, because when, when they're looking good, you also are looking good, you know. And it yeah. helps, and it helps people to build the energy in the room. Um, and one of those ways of doing that would be uh, um, complimenting people. You know, it's like going around and uh, like if you notice a pair of nice shoes on someone, it's like, oh wow, those are the cutest shoes ever. Where did you get those? <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Or um, and that that makes people feel like, grateful and like fuzzy, warm inside. It's like, oh, I. I dressed well today. You know, I looked great. I thought I did, and I did. And I did. I thought I dressed well, and I was right. You know, someone's validated, and say so it's it's helping them look good in their own eyes as well mm -hmm. as like the people around them because you're pointing it out, and then now other everyone else is like, oh wow, those are nice shoes, you know, type of thing. Which I'll be interested in what you think about this skill because that makes me think about friends that I've noticed who have the skill of complimenting people around the, each other in front of people. Mm -hmm. And they've used, you know, use that with me um, where, you know, the two of us are talking to usually one person or two people and they're like, oh, Belinda is the best at such and such, yes. you know? And I'm like, I started realizing, oh, that's such a good, that's such a nice give to give in front of people. Yeah, it is. But I want, as an introvert, I feel like my style, my, I don't do that as naturally, but I do give direct compliments to people mm -hmm. on a more personal level, on a more private level, like when we're talking one-on-one -on -one or, you know, and I, I, I don't think about, I, so that's, that's, which is, I think, I don't know if either one is better or worse. I which, think they're just which different. Which great. No, they're, they're both different. One, yeah. One allows people to to valid like it helps them validate and know where they're they're what they're doing is right you know personally when you're, personally when you're approaching them individually and saying you did this so well i am like you, you look amazing today you know mm -hmm. or you you did such a great job and i'm so grateful you did you know mm -hmm. that helps them feel like they're going the right direction and that they're giving their best efforts because sometimes they feel like their best effort isn't enough uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people criticize themselves all the time. That inner critic is mm -hmm. just terrible. And, yeah. and when you can quiet down that inner critic just a little bit with your, your compliments, it helps people a lot, you know. Now, the ability to compliment, um, like, credit, like, credit someone else. Like, you're in a in conversation a with setting. someone and then a friend of yours comes up and goes, oh, Belinda, how are you today? And it's like, and this is so and so. And it's like, oh, Belinda is so amazing, you know. And she's like, you're right, right. And it's like, da 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 da, like that. That a skill is a skill, yes. But it also helps validate you for other people. You know, it's like, I. That's one of my favorite things to do. And it, I didn't mm -hmm. always do it. It was a group. It was a, a. Two of my friends would do this game. I don't know where they got it and why they started it but if they if the these two friends were together and they came into the room and if any one of them gave a compliment the other one would give another compliment and mint and they would just go up and up and, up. <laughs> and it's like and there's this one time where That's i was funny. in i was in um, cool. the the kitchen and these two friends come in and they're having a conversation with with weston and one of them turns around and goes you have some 
really nice, you have a really nice shirt today, where'd you get that? And, or it's like, and then the other one's like, well, your eyes are stunning. And it's like, <laughs> and then the other one's like, well, your hair, your hair just, you got it just right. <laughs> and it just went off and on. They're just like going back and forth trying to see if they can get the better compliment. Like, and I'm just there going, um, okay, thanks. <laughs> you know, I don't know how to respond to this. It's like, I don't know if I should just like start posing or <laughs> dancing for them or it's like yes i am amazing <laughs> it's like, no stop it's like, stop stop, stop. <laughs> right and like that that was the beginning of of that um uh realization <clears throat> that it's it's actually it's such a great thing to be able to do that for a friend right when i can tell someone else how amazing a friend is uh, that helps build their credibility like mm -hmm. in so many ways like if they get enough people around them building their credibility um, for what they're good at then they that's that's their reputation that mm. is is growing you know mm -hmm. and it's it's those moments where the um, uh, their credibility their their ability to perform in life and have like great opportunities happen because of the compliments you give about them, you know. And if you mm -hmm. can do that for your friends, and your friends can do that for you, the next thing you know, you're a famous Hollywood star, you know. And that's as easy as it is. <laughs> Gratitude and compliment each other like crazy. Like crazy. <laughs> that's right. And make sure all your other friends are that type of person too. Well, thanks so much um, for having me. Yeah, on, on I know. <laughs> just like I feel, I, I feel like there's so much more to talk about. I'm like, how do I end this? Just oh, cool. search "social: the power of relationships," mm -hmm. and um, it'll be there on Amazon as to, for purchase. Yeah. So you could also go to my website, socialthepower.com, and that's the other place. Oh, okay. So what do you have on your website? Um, just there's a podcast on the website. Okay. So people can listen to. Pretty much a lot of the things that we talked about today there's oh. there's different topics on there okay um on those same lines we review different other books on social skills and uh, yeah oh, cool. that's, that's a podcast okay. and the, the the website's really simple and it's basically you go to the website there's a podcast and then there's a link to amazon to buy the book okay and you're just interested in there's a side of you that's interested in helping people have those skills mm -hmm. and just realizing there's simple skills that they could learn and implement and that's not right. have to be stuck in these patterns that they've learned mm -hmm. and they never learn kind of like a way to pull themselves out of it. You got it. You got it. It's, cool. it's, it's there to help people change their way of thinking because social is, it all starts with a strong foundation of gratitude and how you're thinking in those moments. Cool. That's what the book awesome. is. Awesome. Thanks Thank so you. much. I'm so excited to have you. Thanks. Thanks for listening and watching. Cheers. <laughs>